So the next speaker is Christian Kastel from the German Finance Ministry. Thanks a lot, Frank, and for <coughs> Gentlemen, uh, dear Markus, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this uh, very, very interesting conference to Princeton. It's my first visit here, and I'm really starting to like it very much. And of course, also the center. It's a very, very good idea, and I wish you all the success. Um, now, I'm the last one in a certain way, and I can a little bit do some uh, wrap up. On the other hand, I am probably one of those who are closest here to preparation of politics. Uh, so indeed, my teams are responsible for preparing the minister with some ideas on national policies, governance, but also on European and international governance. So uh, I have to make a personal disclaimer. What I will tell you here is by no means uh, the opinion of my minister or of the ministry. It's just my personal opinion. and. Uh, to be more open and frank, this is really necessary. Um, yeah, I, we can save us the overview, and I see there is a time going down. Um, of course, we have heard uh, several from several speakers yesterday and today. Uh, of course, we also see it the same way. Uh, so I bring you the political narrative uh, we have. And it's a, from a focus of a finance minister. Please keep that in mind. If some under issues which are of the same weight, of course, will be a little bit mm, uh, coming a little bit short in my presentation. So it did not start in the EU, but it revealed very clearly, I think, the shortcomings of the eurozone countries, or some eurozone countries, and I would say even more. And the spreads do not reflect today the shortcomings of some economics and fiscal. They also show, I think, the problems of the European institutions, all of them, to deal with the current crisis. And we have tackled them, singled out certain problems, but I think there is a whole bunch of reasons, an interconnected failure of the European political system. And this is also what's showing up in the spread. And so it's not just the country's performance. So, um, of course, we have now sizable fiscal imbalances in most euro area countries due to, of course, necessary on-the-spot crisis-related fiscal loosening and financial sector stabilization, quite necessary. But we should not forget, again, finance ministry is a little bit focused and biased on public finance. In many cases, also failure to achieve sound fiscal positions in good times, and this is true. And then there is the confidence crisis. We have, uh, it's very complex. We have seen here this case by case, there is no one size fits all solution. Uh, there have been unsustainable fiscal positions now coupled with structural economic weaknesses. Uh, we have macroeconomic imbalances. We have bubbles. I think we have heard it from all our speakers, speakers also from, from Hans Werner Sinn this morning, I think in a very comprehensive way how this might work. And of course, we should not forget also some deficiencies in the financial markets. Uh, and also the regulation aspect, I will touch later in, in some minutes again, the regulation issue is an issue, of course. And then we have negative feedback loops between the public and the bank balance sheets, and then all these contagion risks. And now, indeed, euro area financial stability is at risk. Um, then, what do, do we have? Um, of course, there is a European institutional framework, and uh, Franklin exposed uh, uh, last presentation. There is, of course, I fully share that kind of a weak economic uh, governance prior to the crisis. Uh, there was simply, and I, I, I'm guilty myself. I was in the team in 1995 when the German proposal for the that time called stability pact was made. And of course, we thought in a certain way, uh, if public finance is doing right, everything will do right. So the pressure from public finance on the other areas would be that high that we can tackle everything. And of course, this was uh, underestimating uh, the imbalances issue, and we also underestimated the financial market issue, especially the development of the globalized markets, of the leveraging which was possible, and we never thought of in the mid-90s. Maybe some experts have smelled that, but I, have, I say in the political process, it was not really present. So this was that. 
Of course, there was also a, a quite a lax implementation of stability and growth pack rule. I fully agree here. But uh, please, I have, uh, as I was also in that long night in Brussels uh, with my minister at that time, uh, when we discussed this 2002-2003 French-German thing, um, we, we should not uh, go for legends. There are some legends, sorry. Um, there is one, one fact, and this is true. Uh, I think this was when some people on a very high political level, far above myself, said we do not want to have the next escalation step in the stability and growth pact procedure. This was true. On the other hand, there really was a problem with the facts. And please, uh, I, I took, take the opportunity, even if it cost me one minute, uh, to tell you what was there. I think the case was that Germany, only speak of Germany now, that Germany got a recommendation to do certain measures due to a certain amount of GDP. And this is exactly what we did. There was no loss there. We did exactly fulfill the recommendation. The only problem was, at that time, that the macroeconomic development was worse and therefore the deficit correction was insufficient. But this, sorry, this is really a problem. Yeah? So you see something lie there outside, maybe dead, you stand beside, the policy come, you are the murderer. So it's, it, it's a little bit difficult. So that, yeah, sorry, uh, facts have to be facts. Anyway, I admit, I admit it was a big policy mistake uh, to say we do not want to have it. It was a big policy mistake and I may also say for the sake of my team, we recommended at that time to the minister and also to the chancellery, please take it, even if it's based on, on a factual, say, ambiguous position, go the next step, but there the chancellery at that time decided different. But again. The outcome is not that bad, on the other hand. Um, you may say in the corrective <coughs> arm uh, some relativity took place. Yes, true, I also do not like that. On the other hand, we improved the preventive arm very much, which has now led to some, uh, some I think, quite interesting new things we now have. And I think if you see it like that, the fiscal compact we now have draws, again, a little bit of the German model, which has additionally other models, but also, of course, very much on the preventive arm, which was strengthened during that reform. So it's not all bad. Nevertheless, politically, it was a big mistake. And there is another institutional thing you should please remember. At that time, it was clearly said, also with the, uh, constitute, with, the court, with the High Court of Europe, that only the Commission can make a proposal. So the ECOFIN Council could not make another decision. They had to wait for a new Commission proposal. And this, I think, is a very interesting institutional piece of governance. I would like to come back later. So, uh, bu 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 I will go ahead quickly. So, I am now, this, I can be quite short here. Uh, this is the package, also Franklin has already shown to you. This is what we all have. Um, of course, uh, coming to the macroeconomic imbalance procedure, as this was discussed here also, I think, of course, true, uh, there was the question whether symmetrically approaches have to take place. Yes, they have to, and I think they are on the way. Also, Germany has, of course, for instance, the responsibility of that. Of course, what we should not do is, uh, say, hammer down our competitiveness uh, approach. I think we should do something more for internal demand. We are on its way. The figures show that clearly and others have to catch up. Um, okay, not more to that because we have already seen this from Franklin. Then there are national reform agendas. I said some progress with fiscal and structural adjustment at the member state level uh, have been there. And there's still the question, I had the uh, honor uh, to join the IMF Fiscal Forum on Wednesday. We on a panel with Christina Romer who clearly made a point, there is fiscal space for Germany, do more. Uh, I, I, have, I have a problem, I have a problem with that approach, I admit, of course, uh, I think Germany has done some macro in crisis, but this do more or say backloaded consolidation. Uh, the fiscal space we have in Germany, yes, but it's due to method. We all know the structural improvement of Germany is overvalued because the methods do not deliver the sharp fall and they do not deliver the sharp rise. Whatever you use for differentiating between cyclical and structural, especially in such a situation, is very, very difficult. So I would by no means encourage 
any German politicians now to uh, spend the money uh, whatever is possible. And there are some politicians, of course, who would like to. Again, of course, I'm a member of staff and the finance minister. You would know my position right away. Um, of course, uh, some risks, specifically development and political frictions, are there. I know there is a problem in those countries who have to change their relative prices. I think without recession, change of relative prices will not work. On the other hand, also Germany will have to accept for a time being, then maybe running a little bit above, say, the 2% inflation rate, uh, which is now set for the EU as a whole. And Benoit, I think, has made uh, the right uh, words to that. Uh, how this is a small uh, cutting edge thing, what is okay for uh, redefining the imbalances and what is the danger to price stability. Okay, then there is the European reform agenda. Uh, uh, yes, I think uh, the recent institutional reform steps uh, are welcome, but there are still challenges. Uh, this is what Franklin has said. Franklin has said. I think still we need a credible, effective implementation, and the enforcement aspect can really not be neglected. Again, on the other hand, uh, I'm closely following the process of uh, bureaucratic uh, file of bureaucratic. Um, I would say developments. Now the Commission has to produce the regulation, secondary law, and all this, and uh, we still uh, have to be careful to keep the whole system simple. I'm already run up by my members of Parliament, Christian. Nobody understands your debt practice. What's of that? And you can have also a fiscal compact, which is a balanced budget rule in, in essence, with other possibilities. There is no one size fits all. I told tell the Commission now quite frequently: keep it simple, keep it pragmatic. Any member of parliament also has to get it. So, but it's uh, not that easy. Um, okay, then I would not uh, like to forget there is, of course, uh, also a growth issue. Uh, it's not here on my slide, but I would like to mention it. It was also uh, made very important here in the audience. There should be a European growth strategy, of course, again, with the caution uh, Benoit made. And there is some, I know, it's a huge task and there are funds are low, but uh, anyway, there are some EU funds. Uh, there is the EIB and others, and we should not forget the EU budget um, with, say, some 80 to 90 percent of agriculture. This is really a shame, sorry. Uh, and we really have to do more uh, also on that side of the road. So, coming... Coming to conclusions and outlook already, um, yeah, there is a credible effective rules framework necessary. Um, so, uh, still we should avoid, of course, bailout, uh, we should have this bailout expectations be clear cut. I will say a little bit more, maybe I skip this slide right away, it costs me time. Okay, I will. I will say, I say something on this. I think if we take all this together now, um, you can ask, and this is the question other the speakers already have uh, made here, is this sufficient now to return for the Eurozone to kind of a virtuous cycle? Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, I, would, I would be happy if this would work, but I also uh, I have to, to say, I share the skepticism, and now I have to be very careful here as, as a member, uh, staff member of government, um, and again, I come back. It, uh, this again, we have to take care of the state of the union, and uh, this is where I started with the principle. We have to look at economics. We have to avoid moral hazard, and we have to try to build a system which really has well a comprehensive incentive compatibility. The incentives have to be right, and therefore we should not forget forget that it's not just crisis management. We can do a lot of stupid things to try to avoid crisis or to have crisis management which will never work in a, in a preventive system for the next crisis. And I again fear we have already, since the last two years, doing a lot of stupid precedents which will make, brought us even far off a really incentive compatible solution for the long run. And this is a pity. And then we have not to forget the political economy, uh, big integrational steps not possible, 
yesterday US 100 years uh, for integration here. Uh, the union is still to come and this of course excludes I think transfers, euro bonds and it would also avoid major loss of national sovereignty. Maybe there's a tiny chance to have some, I will, I hope I have 30 seconds for that. So what are we going to have? I think we need, uh, so some, that's a little bit eclectic now. First of all, I share the view, markets have to play a role. And it was a big mistake to start on Greece with taking them from the market. The second is, of course, there is no way out because the political union isn't there and it takes time, also in Europe with a very heterogeneous mode. Uh, we need this coordination and cooperation, so all what I said uh, we have in the pipeline is useful, you could say a lot in details, but it's useful. Uh, then we need, I think, the full-fledged crisis mechanism. We still don't have it. I think we need a clear <coughs> mechanism for liquidity cases, solvency cases. We should clearly state there is no bailout. It must be possible that there is a, a default, a managed default. We need mechanisms for that. I can say something to firewalls. I do not believe in firewalls in the crisis mechanism. It never worked. It didn't also work within this. I remember this Basel report report central banks with short-term liquidity swaps. I think in the end, to stop it, uh, the answer has to be unlimited. I know this has uh, different things, uh, different consequences, but again, uh, I see it together with the markets. We need a full-fledged European regulation. I will not repeat uh, what is said here. I fully share this. There's really an integration of step we can take, because this is also for the public, say, taming of the banks. I think there is something more possible. Uh, then I'm very fond of the idea of Marcus and team. I think SBs could be a very good idea, maybe a little bit refined. ECB, uh, I think I do not need some, to say something there. This is the only lender of last resort. Let's have a final look, Marcus, if I have two more thoughts. Uh, a final look at governance to bridge the gap we have in political economy. We might think of putting more independence in certain institutions to make, for instance, in the crisis mechanisms, uh, say, some loss of sovereignty possible if it's not driven by ECOFIN, but maybe if it's driven by the ESM, who could be a crisis manager, with a certain independence, with a certain technical capacity, OECD, IMF. This would probably help to bridge it, because the Greeks would never accept something from the Germans, and so, yeah, it's something like that. So we have to depoliticize, I think, as far as we cannot go forward with the political union, which is a goal. And there, I, mean, I think we lost a lot of time to come to comprehensive plans. I think we nearly lost two years. Uh, and I fear, I have to admit, that also my country, to a certain degree, is responsible for that. Uh, I strongly agree with uh, Professor Kuchmann. Uh, it's not better for countries to do alone, especially not for Germany. This is what I tell. People I'm visiting who approach me telling all the day. The EU in the long run, of course, in a globalized world is doomed to integrate. If this is not work, uh, then maybe the United States have to be aware that some 20 countries would apply for membership in the United States. Thank you very much. <laughs>